Hey, with Thought 30, for the past few years, 17's Olivia Lavoie has re-examined Kern County cold cases, unsolved crimes where the investigation has gone nowhere, often for decades. These special reports usually begin with a loved one reaching out, asking us to open a new chapter into a stalled case. But this story is different tonight, and it delivers a rare perspective into a 20-year-old cold case investigation. Even for November, it was a cold night back in 1997. It was a Sunday as the Golden Empire was preparing for Thanksgiving only a few days away. Those holiday celebrations led 39-year-old Carrie Anderson to a Bakersfield bar. The bar, once on 34th Street, is gone now. But what happened more than 20 years ago continues to haunt our community. It's a mystery that begins at the Buckhorn. I was just going in there, I knew the bartender. The night at the bar continues to be a haze. The next morning, the horror set in. It was scary because I couldn't talk. I had a, a thing in my neck. Carrie Anderson was found naked, bloodied and battered, dumped behind the Get Bus maintenance yard on Golden State Highway. She'd been raped, beaten, her skull crushed, her throat slit. The level of brutality made it clear she was supposed to die. I don't know why. I got it. Maybe it's just my imagination. I can still feel it. But... Carrie was in the hospital for months. It wasn't until Christmas Day when she could speak again. An incredible moment for Carrie's family, including her six children. But it was overshadowed by the fact that her life would never be the same. What was it like trying to be a mother after that? I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I thought I was going to die still. A shattered life. Carrie's brain trauma affected her memory severely. She had to learn to walk again. Everything from taking a bath to holding a spoon was new. She would never drive a car again or hold a job. I'm afraid to be around people. I'm just scared they won't understand what, what happened to me. I'm scared of that. Carrie lives alone in a home in Oildale, surrounded by her three dogs. She understands the way people look at her. Her disability is evident. Everybody thinks I'm stupid because I don't, I don't get things half the time. I don't get it what they're talking about. I don't think they care. It's just been so long that I've been this way. I can't stand it anymore. Carrie believes there were multiple attackers. She strains to piece together the events that began at the Buckhorn. A girl was in there that I knew her, and she came up and asked me if she could borrow some Christmas money for her kids. And I think she saw my wallet and told these guys that I had so much money in my wallet. Although it was a Sunday and banks were closed, Carrie had an SSI check that she was able to cash. Three thousand bucks is what they got, which I want that back. <laughs> that would really help me right now, but um. That's all they got out of this, was $3,000 and got a chance to beat somebody to death. Though there are some differences, like the robbery and violent beating, Carrie's case is hauntingly similar to others we've covered. Women stabbed, left nude, many dumped in open areas, some sexually assaulted. A murderous rampage taking place in Bakersfield between 1996 and 2001. Now what do I do if they find me and finish the job? That's what I, I feel that they're going to do. How does it feel having it be unsolved? It feels terrible. It feels like I got pushed aside for somebody that did bad things to me. That, that nobody cares about me. They just push me aside. And that hurts. It hurts a lot. Decades of fear. A victim living in her own prison. It's horrible what I feel every day of my life. If you refer to her as lucky to be alive, she'll tell you different. Trapped inside her tiny home with limited motivation to keep the house clean, she wants to go back to a better life. And I was always a joker. I always would make people laugh and stuff. And it was fun. It was fun way back then when I wasn't attacked. <laughs> but now it's, now it's not the same. It's just not the same. 
Do you still joke around ever? No. No. I'm sorry, that kind of stuff makes me cry because I, I, I used to be, what I used to be like to compare to now is so different. It's really different. Even with countless doctors, surgeries, and physical therapy, Carrie will always wear the scars around her neck. And she realizes her memory, her brain, will never heal. And I keep thinking I'm 60 now, maybe I don't have too much life to go on. <laughs> But I feel like I'm, I'm, I want to go on. I'd like to go to the walk-in movies again. I never get a chance to do that anymore. Walk-in movies, go out to dinner. That would be nice, go out to dinner. Once left for dead, her slow recovery has taken a big step, sharing her story for the first time, fighting the fear, demanding justice, searching for happiness, trying to solve the mystery that began at the Buckhorn. Because I want them put away so they can't do it to somebody else. Justice means I get to close this case for myself. So that's a lot of justice right there, just letting me live again without fear every day. And sitting in my house by myself. I'm sorry. If you have any information on Carrie's case, you are urged to contact Bakersfield Police Detective Christina Abshire at 326-3559. And remember, you can always remain anonymous by calling the Secret Witness Hotline. That number is 322-4040. Well, as you saw, Carrie's brutal attack has affected her life in many ways, including how she lives. 17's Olivia Lavoy spent some time with Carrie to try to understand the life-altering impacts of the trauma she suffered. For a raw look at Carrie's day-to-day -day life, you can go to our website, kget.com, and click the hot link icon. There you will also find a link that will show how you might be able to help her.